Hello there. This is a story about Tiddles the cat and her new neighbour. Tiddles stretched out in the sunshine. She had found a lush piece of grass, just the right distance from the road, just the right distance from the nearby bushes, out of sight of the children, and sheltered from the breeze. Ah, oh, life was good. This morning, breakfast had been chicken pieces in a delicious gravy, and her water had been fresh and chilled. Tiddles loved the summer. Her paws stayed clean and dry. There was ample opportunity for sleeping during the day and hunting at night. Life indeed was good. Another stretch, and she lay her head down on a comfortable paw. Before she had even managed one wink, let alone forty, she was disturbed by the rumble of a large truck pulling up opposite, next to her house. She had often seen vans in the road, delivering groceries, milk, parcels, but these were relatively small vehicles, and this, this was a huge lorry. And it was next to her house. The house had been up for sale for some time, and Tiddles had got used to having the run of its garden, and uh, she used this for certain feline necessities. She felt personally affronted by someone having the temerity to actually buy the property, and worse yet, to move in. She roused herself from her comfortable napping position and cautiously crossed the road to watch the newcomers move in. There were at least five men fetching and carrying furniture and a vast assortment of boxes from the removals lorry. This was clearly going to take some time, so Tiddles hopped up on the fence between the two houses and performed her usual precision ballet along the top to reach her garden at the back of the house. There was far too much commotion at the front for a restful snooze. She hopped down and tucked herself under the fragrant jasmine bush at the end of the garden and composed herself for sleep. Some hours later, she stretched and yawned, stood, scratched her left ear, arched her back, and looked around. Things seemed to be a little quieter now, so she jumped up onto the fence, just for the exercise, and started to make her way towards her special door into the kitchen and a bite of lunch. The sudden noise took Tiddles entirely by surprise, so much so that looking one way and placing paws another, she missed her footing and tumbled off the fence. Yes, of course, she landed on her paws, but that was not the point. The shame of it, the embarrassment. What if someone had seen? That scraggy ginger Tom from number 17. The one-eyed cat from round the corner. How they would laugh. But wait, there was a more important question to consider first. Where had that appalling noise come from? Not wishing to chance the top of the fence until she knew what to expect, she prowled along to one of several knot holes which gave her a good view of the next door garden. Putting her eye to the hole, Tiddle surveyed the scene. There were many boxes in the garden, but most were now empty. Clearly the moving in process was well advanced. Then she saw it. A dog. A medium-sized, scruffy, wiry, grey dog. This was too much. A dog, for heaven's sake! Who would want a dog? And now, she might have to share her second garden. 
suffer his nighttime howls, the indignity of living next door to a dog. But these were long-term considerations. Right now, that dog needed to be taught a lesson for causing her tumble from the fence. Over a light lunch of tuna and munchies, she considered what was called for. A cunning plan formed in her mind, based on her superior knowledge of the area, and the garden next door in particular. After just a short nap to help with the digestion, Tiddle strolled out into the garden and leapt effortlessly onto the fence. The dog was there clearly being kept out of the way while the new people organised the house. Tiddles eyed him with an icy stare. He jumped. He barked. But there was no element of surprise now. She had the upper paw. She walked to the end of the garden atop the fence and jumped down into his territory. The dog began barking madly. An upstairs window opened, and a voice called out, Baxter! Baxter! Will you be quiet? Baxter wasn't quiet. In fact, he barked even more as he ran towards Tiddles. Tiddles, of course, expected this, and was already halfway through the loose boards at the bottom of the garden. She headed out and away, quickly enough to stay ahead of the dog, but not so quickly that he fell too far behind. He was only a dog, after all. Tiddles ran up the road, turned right, turned left, turned right again, and paused for a moment to glance back. The dog was still following her. Tiddles ran across the field at the top of the estate, heading for the allotments. Here, she sprang through the wide wire mesh and stopped. She turned sat down and looked back in the direction of the dog's pursuit. She curled her tail around her paws, scratched her right ear, and waited. The dog panted across the field and ran straight towards Tiddles. Suddenly, there was a yelp. The dog was lodged, with his head and forelegs through the wire mesh, but the rest of him still in the field. He couldn't go forwards. He couldn't go backwards. He was stuck. Tiddle stood, stretched, yawned, and walked up to the dog, staring at him imperiously. Her look said, this is my territory. You had better understand that. The dog looked at her with eyes that were at once baleful and playful. Tiddles had planned on perhaps climbing on his back, as people do with horses, or even biting his tail. But her heart wasn't in it. She felt sorry for him, and a little ashamed of herself. It was not really his fault she had been surprised. Well, it was, but really. Was this how a dignified feline should react? With a series of nudges and the odd helping paw, she helped the dog back out of the fence and led him home. As they arrived, they found Tiddle's people and Baxter's people chatting in front of the houses. Oh, look at them, Mrs. Tiddles cooed. They are best friends already. At this, Tiddles turned, walked slowly across the road, with her tail straight up in the air, and resumed her napping place under the bushes.